I'm Jessica Russo Cher, and I'm going to show you how to draw a portrait. I will illustrate the basic proportions of a face and all the facial features involved. I'll be using some drawings that I've done, as well as taking a deep dive into the eyes, nose, and mouth to show you some more details on how to draw those features accurately. So if you follow these few basic proportional steps, your drawing will look really successful, even if you're a beginner. Here's how to start with the shape of the head. You can think of it as being an egg shape, a little bit more narrow down here and a little bit more wider up here. Some of us have more square or rectangular faces or heart-shaped faces, and you can modify that from there. But let's just start with the beginning with just a basic oval. You want to have the oval take up the majority of your paper. Okay, you have the top of the head and you have the chin. The midpoint is your eyes. Mistake. People draw the eyes all the way up here. And we will look weird if we have eyes up here. If I'm able to measure from my chin to my eyes, it's the same as from the chin to the top of my head. Now, remember, I'm talking about the top of my head, not where my hairline starts. So I have this much space in there. Once you have that marked out, then we need to figure out the landmark for your nose. Eyes to your chin, the halfway point around is your nose, okay? And that could be right through the ball of your nose, or it could be the tip of your nose. Some of us have longer pointier nose, some of us have slightly upturned noses, and that's where individuality comes in. And then halfway from our nose to our chin, approximately, is our mouth. Okay, so now we have the basics of where our eyes, nose, and mouth are located. Now we kind of have to figure out how much space on our face they take up. The best way to think about that is using your eye as a measuring device. I'm going to measure my eye from the inside corner to the outside corner. The same distance that I have in between my eyes. If I was able to make a copy of one of my eyes, take it out, and put it right there, it I would be able to fit three eyes in a row. If you turned, you could fit another eye on either side. If you're drawing it from the front, you'll only see about a half of an eye to three quarters of an eye on the sides. Five eyes all the way across. Common mistake number two. People draw eyes way too big. We focus on eyes when we speak to one another, or we should. And therefore, we kind of see them as larger when we draw them. That's a big mistake. Can you guess how wide our nose is? You got it. Our nose is the same width as our eye. So if I was to measure my eye and I was able to measure my nose, including the nostrils, it's the same width of my eye. So keep that in mind if you're working on common mistake number two and you're drawing your eyes really big, you would have to also draw your nose really big. Now mouth. Common mistake number three, people draw mouths really small. Up to the center of your eye. That means your lips are a half eye, a half eye, and a whole eye. Two full eyes wide, minimum. If you're smiling, that gets extended. Those basic guidelines will really help you get the foundation of where everything goes on your face. There's one other thing that we're not talking about, though. If you're drawing someone with shorter hair, we have ears. Common mistake number four. People draw ears way too small. Top of my ear is aligned with what? My eyebrow. Now, eyebrows can really vary per person, how close they are to your eye or how far up they are on your forehead. Now the bottom of your ear, it depends. If you have like a hanging earlobe like me or an attached earlobe, there could be some variation, but it's gonna be quite similar. And it goes from the bottom of the ear to somewhere between your nose and your mouth. Yes, that's how long your ear is. So if we were gonna Vincent Van Gogh it, cut off the ear and then put it 
up here, it would go all the way from my eyebrow to almost my mouth. Common mistake number five, your neck is not so big and not so long. Your neck is made up of several muscles and it's important to know those muscles when you're doing a portrait. You have your sternocleidomastoid, which is this muscle here. And it's important to know that muscle kind of comes down slightly in a V to this super sternal notch. This is the little dip in between your clavicle. Okay, you form little pockets. Okay, and then you have your trapezius. This is your trapezius. It's a muscle here. It's a little bit of a triangle shape. Trapezius goes up onto your neck. If I draw a line straight across from my trapezius, I come to here. That's not that far down from my chin, is it? It's very close. I'll give you a few shortcuts on understanding some of the basic structures of the facial features. Eyes come in all different shapes. Some of us have, you can see more eyelids, some can see less, it all depends. To become more narrow near the tear duct in the inside, and it's gonna go up like a mountain very steep and then come down very slowly. The top eyelid extends beyond the bottom. An iris, okay? Our pupil is the black part inside the eye and the iris is the color that's around it. If you have really wide eyes, you'll be able to see white above your iris and it's going to cover on the bottom as well with a lot of people. You can see a little bit more, okay? So pay attention to the the shape and how big the pupil and iris are in there. Focusing on the negative space of around the pupil and the iris, you can get a really good idea of how large your pupil and iris are in your eye. We don't just have upper eyelids, we have lower eyelids. They're not things that make you look old. I mean, they can make you look a little old, but we all have lower eyelids. We have this part right here. And if we eliminate them from our drawings, we don't make ourselves look better, we make ourselves look puffier. Okay, so imagine I didn't have any shadow here or any lower eyelid, it will look like my cheeks go straight up into my eyes. Keep in mind, the eyebrow will follow a similar pattern. It, it will be the opposite of the way the upper eyelid goes up. The upper eyelid goes up very fast and then has a slow descent. The eyebrow has a slow ascent and then it has a quicker descent on the end. Again, this varies based on your eyebrows. Now when you're drawing your nose, I have a simple way of getting a generic nose out. A mountain, a valley, a mountain, in two parentheses. It's kind of mirrored on my nose. Now we all don't have my shaped nose. Now if you have a longer straighter nose, that, that's all going to vary. But that's a, a good way to create sort of a um, generic approach to drawing a nose, especially for beginners. So if you understand how the cheek muscles work, you can understand how to draw the nose better. So when I smile, my cheeks come up here and I get this muscle right here and you grab it, okay? So a lot of people, when they're first drawing portraits, they're drawing lines straight here. We don't have lines there. What defines our nose are cheek muscles. Now with your mouth, it's really important to first think about your philtrum. Your philtrum is this little thing right here, there. Okay, and that will help create the basic structure. Remember, your mouth is not something that's added on. It's part of your face, so you need to integrate it into the muscles of your face. I like to think of the lips in very triangular shapes, at least for the top lip. And you go from the corner, and you go up to the top, down into a valley, another mountain, and down. Okay, you can think of the center part as being a little bit of a circle. Okay. The bottom lip, I tend to think as 
one rectangle and two triangles. The bottom center part as being a rectangle and then triangles going into the corners of her mouth. From there, you can go around and work on the shadow underneath the lip. So by having the shadow under here, you can really get an idea of how, how the lips fit into the rest of the face. Once you finish those parts, then you're ready to add individual characteristics. Understanding your jawline, how the individual characteristics of your, your chin, maybe this brow bone, you might have some definition over there. You might have a mole or something that's on your face that's characteristic of you, a big scar. Whatever it is, you can consider adding those things on. So these are just some tips and tricks to get you started in understanding how to draw a portrait, whether from a photograph or from direct observation. You'll find more links to tips and tricks on portrait drawing in the description below. I've also put a link to this guide that outlines all the basic proportions. Have fun and share your drawings with me. I would love to see them.